Right. Uh, welcome to the second lecture in matrix theory. Uh, so this is the second supplemental lecture in addition to the lecture videos that have been put up uh, in Piazza. So this week uh, in in the in the videos posted in Piazza, uh, you should hopefully have seen the following. So uh, how do you what is the geometric interpretation of a system of linear equations? Uh, what do we mean by elementary row operations and uh, how do you invert square matrices and and in this lecture video i'll basically uh, give an overview of what is all what you've already seen in those lectures and and maybe add some pointers here and there so to summarize uh, we've seen that there are different interpretations to a system of linear equations and the most basic one is the following so 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 what do we so what do we how do we geometrically interpret uh, a single linear equation so if we have uh, an equation in two variables say 2x plus 3y equal to 4 then then this represents a straight line so it is this black line that 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 has been drawn over here and similarly uh, and, and so basically for two variables, each uh, equation represents a line. If it's in three variables, then it is a plane in three dimensions. And uh, in general, for if you have uh, an equation in n variables, then it is going to be an n-dimensional hyperplane in in a space of psi of dimension n plus one. Right. And and here, whenever I say space. Uh, or n dimensional space i mean the euclidean space uh, rn for example so when so when we are given a system of linear equations suppose that uh, we are given these two linear equations 2x plus 3y equal to 4 and y equal to 1 then what, when we say that we want the solution to this system then what we are asking for is do these two lines meet and if so at what point so the solution to the system of linear equations is the point of intersection of these two lines so so in general i mean uh, even just thinking about it geometrically we can immediately say the, see that the at least in two dimensions a system of linear equations can have either uh, a unique solution so a unique solution is when the two point the two lines intersect at a single point for example the black line and the green line uh, intersect at one point and uh, it is also possible that th that no solution exists so for example if we consider this equation and this equation which is represented by the black line and the blue line then obviously no solution exists because these two lines are parallel to each other and they cannot meet similarly uh, if we consider another system let's say that i have 4x plus 6y equal to 8 and if we look at the two equations this and this then essentially these two represent the same line so the system of linear equations defined by this equation and this equation uh, correspond to a line and therefore there are infinitely many solutions right so in general a system of linear equations can have either no solution or uh, it can have one solution or infinitely many solutions and at least geometrically it is possible in two dimensions we easily see that uh, the number of solutions is either one or zero or infinitely many you can't have finitely many uh, uh, solutions uh, but but greater than one and that's simply because of the fact that if you have two lines they can meet at only a single at most at a single point or the two lines have to coincide now when we go to higher dimensions for example if we have uh, an equation in three variables then then we're basically talking we're basically looking at lines uh, in r in r3 uh, these planes uh, can 
either intersect so if you have three planes or three uh, equations then these correspond to three planes and these three planes can either be the same or they can intersect at a single line or the intersection can be a single point or it's possible that the intersection is a null set they don't intersect at all right so the system of solution so the space of solutions or the set of solutions of uh, three linear equations in uh, three variables can either be a plane or it can be a line or it can be a point or it can be the empty set right and, and basically this this extends to higher dimensions uh, if you look at uh, a system of equations in n variables then then basically what we have is a hyperplane uh, basically we have a number of hyperplanes uh, n minus one dimensional hyperplanes in, in rn and uh, and the solution can either be an n, n, di n minus one dimensional hyperplane or an n minus two dimensional hyperplane it can be a point or it can be an offset right and uh, of course I, I, this, all of this is to develop intuition uh, we'll see a more precise characterization and uh, uh, a more formal way to study the space of solutions in the coming lectures so when we have a system of linear equations we can represent it uh, in this matrix form so, so we can write this as a x equal to b so throughout i'll be using uh, at least in my notation i will use an underline to denote a vector a column vector and so so the system of so any general system of linear equations uh, is, so m linear equations in n uh, variables can be written as a matrix a times vector x is equal to vector b where x is the vector of unknowns b is is the vector of values and a is the coefficient matrix so this is going to be an m by n matrix this is going to be an m by 1 matrix and this is going to be an n by 1 matrix right and there are two different interpretations that you already seen in the in the lecture videos posted and that is either the row interpretation or the column interpretation so what do we mean by the row interpretation if you look at any row that is what i mean so each row of of this system corresponds to one linear equation so for example a11 times x1 plus a12 times x2 up to a1n xn is equal to b1 right and this gives one linear equations and geometrically this represents uh, an n minus one dimensional hyperplane in n uh, rn so so the row interpretation of a system of linear equations is basically you have m uh, hyperplanes and uh, the question is what is the intersection of these hyperplanes is it a single point is it a line uh, is it some other hyperplane of uh, slightly larger dimension or uh, is it the empty set right? so that gives you the row interpretation for a system of linear equations so what is the column interpretation the column interpretation is the following now we can view this system of linear equations as a linear combination of the columns so it is column 1 times x1 plus column 2 times x2 so the, this is column 1 of the a matrix column 2 of the b matrix and so on plus column n times xn is equal to b right and therefore the question is is it can, is it possible so how many linear combinations of the columns of the matrix a gives you the vector b now again it's possible that uh, no linear no such linear combination exists in which case we have no solution and we say that the system is inconsistent uh, it's possible that there are infinitely many solutions to this to, to uh, this system 
So infinitely many linear combinations will can give you uh, the B vector. Basically, there are some free variables over here. Right? So, so there are these two different interpretations. The row interpretation uh, that is as the intersection of hyperplanes and the column interpretation as the linear combination of columns of the coefficient matrix. Right? And for, for the most part of this course, we will really see the column interpretation because it will turn out that this is very useful and very important. So, so in order to get a characterization of the solutions of a system of linear equations, uh, what we the first question that we'll ask is what kind of operations would preserve the system of linear equations? So suppose that I have a system of linear equations a1 x equal to b1 where a1 is some coefficient matrix m by n and b1 is, is the vector is a vector and suppose that I have another system of linear equations a2 x equal to b2 when do we say that these two systems are the same or are they equivalent so we say that they are equivalent if if every solution to a1 x equal to b1 is also a solution of a2 x equal to b2 and similarly every solution of a2 x equal to b2 is also a solution of a1 x equal to b1 right so so this is the definition of uh, of two systems of linear equations being equivalent right and 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 suppose that we can we can find general transformations which transforms one system of linear equations into another equivalent system of linear equations then then we want to find out what such transformation we want to characterize the transformations which preserve equivalence of systems of linear equations but, but first of all, why, why do we even want to do this? So the reason we want to do it is the following. Now suppose that we have a system of linear equations ax a1x equal to b1. We want to be able to solve it, right? And uh, in general, if this is, if, the, if uh, we have say 110 equations in 100 unknowns, then, then we can't obviously solve it by hand. We need some kind of an algorithm to to get the solutions so so if we were able to somehow magically transform this into a simpler uh, system of linear equations then this would be beneficial and what is the simplest uh, system of linear equations that you can solve immediately the simplest system is is, is of the following form suppose that a was equal to something like this so 1 1 so it's it's kind of like a diagonal matrix which has ones along the primary diagonal and everything else is zero so that is if it's a fat matrix if it's a tall matrix then if a is of the form one 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 zero so zeros and all off diagonal entries then this system gives you the solution directly right it just by inspection you can immediately say that uh, it is x1 equal to b1 x2 equal to b2 and so on right? and you can immediately say whether the system is consistent at least for a system of linear equations with a coefficient matrix of in one of these two forms uh, you know the, the immediately uh, whether a solution exists or not a solution exists as long as you don't have an inconsistent uh, linear system. So if you have 0 equal to Bm, where Bm is non-zero, then it means that the system is inconsistent. Uh, but, but as long as this particular system has at least one solution, we know that the original system also has a solution. Right. So, if we can somehow transform uh, any given system of linear equations to another system where the coefficient matrix has is, is like is something like an identity matrix or it's a diagonal matrix uh, with, with, 
with on, with with non-zero coefficients only along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else then it's very easy to solve right and the goal of the, at least the first part of this course will be to design such transformations and study these transformations which 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 reduce the given system of linear equations into this easy system of linear equations so one class of operations which preserve equivalence between two systems of linear equations are these elementary row operations and you've already seen this uh, in in the previous in the videos that, that have been posted uh, on piazza and so what are the elementary row operations the elementary row operations basically uh, are of three kinds right so the first is exchanging two rows the second is uh, scaling a row or multiplying a row by a constant and the third is taking linear combinations of rows or subtracting one row by a scaled version of another. Right. So, so basically if we have a system, let's say 2x plus 3y plus 4z equal to 2 and maybe x plus y equal to 0 and say y plus 9z equal to 7 then so this is let's call this equation 1.1 this equation 1.2 and this is equation 1.3 So basically if I exchange any two of these equations then then it doesn't change the system of linear equations that that's pretty obvious again if I scale any particular row by a constant so if I multiply an entire row by a constant then the solutions don't change because I can always say multiply 2x plus 2y equal to 0 or uh, say 3x plus 27z equal to 21 21 and and once again that doesn't change the system of linear equations so so geometrically speaking uh, what we are doing is when we when we are multiplying uh, the entire so 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 of course exchanging rows doesn't change anything you have the same set of planes or hyperplanes uh, nothing changes you only change the labeling so you call the this is the first one this is the second equation instead you are saying that this is the first equation and this is the second equation so scaling a row doesn't really change the the, the plane uh, that you've defined uh, or the linear equation itself it is the same linear equation but but perhaps uh, the third one is a little more interesting because you are subtracting one row by a scaled version of another so let's say that i have a new system of linear equations let's call it 2.1 2.2 and 2.3 and say that 2.1 is the same as 1.1 but uh, 2.2 is obtained by taking 1.2 minus for example uh, so this was my original system so minus a half times equation 1.1 okay and uh, 3 point 3.2 
is the same as sorry, 2.2 is 2.3 is the same as 1.3 okay so all i do is i take i take the second equation subtract it by half times the first equation and that gives me a new system of linear equations so so basically when we are doing these operations we are changing the the planes or the hyperplanes which define the system of linear equations where we are effectively transforming the system but but in fact it turns out that this transformation does not change the solution the set of solutions so these so, so now by doing this operation uh, we've changed the system but the new system has the same solution as the original system and why is that the case now since every new equation is obtained by a scaled version of uh, uh, basically a linear combination of uh, the, the previous equations we are basically not changing the solution space because if x y z is a solution of the first system then x y z will also be a solution of the second system that's, that's easy to verify and uh, uh, i leave you to check this now similarly you can also obtain the first system from the second system by using a similar operation so 1.1 is the same as equation 2.1 but 1.2 equation 1.2 can be written as equation 2.2 plus two times plus half times equation uh, 2.1 and 2.3 and 1.3 equation 1.3 is the same as equation 2.3 so therefore any uh, set of x y z which which satisfies the second set of uh, linear equations will also satisfy the first set of linear equations right so these are the three elementary row operations and they preserve uh, the set of solutions of a linear equation of a system of linear equations now each of these are sort of linear operations and uh, although i have not precisely define what a linear operation is but but you but you know intuitively what it means right uh, so so each of these operations can be represented by uh, a matrix so so you have a times x sorry. so you have a times x equal to b which is the original system of linear equations if if i interchange two rows then or in other words i do an op an elementary ro row operation of the first kind then this corresponds to pre multiplying or left multiplying the entire system of linear equations by a permutation matrix so exchanging the ith and the jth row corresponds to multiplying a permutation matrix pij which is obtained by exchanging uh, the ith and jth column of the identity matrix right and okay so so this corresponds to so each so exchanging rows corresponds to corresponds to a permutation matrix pij right now uh, scaling a particular row amounts to multiplying or left multiplying the whole thing by a matrix which is all ones except the coefficient factor in the particular location corresponding to the row that uh, you want to scale so suppose you want to scale the ith row by alpha and leave all other rows as as it is then it is a diagonal matrix with ones along all the diagonal entries except the ith location where uh, uh, where it is equal to alpha so so the corresponding so scaling row i corresponds to left multiplying by this 
matrix let me call it d i alpha which is which is obtained by taking the identity matrix but replacing the i comma ith location with alpha right and then the third kind of operation is uh, this taking these linear combinations so row i if we want to set it to row i minus alpha times row j then let's call this e i j alpha let me just call this i am deviating from the notation used uh, in in the other lecture videos but but hopefully this should be uh, straightforward so then so this e i j alpha is basically going to be the identity matrix but in the i j -th location you have an alpha right so these are the associated matrices corresponding to each of the elementary row operations so each elementary row operation corresponds to left multiplying this system of linear equations uh, or, or this corresponding uh, vector equation by a corresponding matrix right so in terms of matrices when we are doing a sequence of uh, row operations what we are doing is multiple is left multiplying the system uh, by a number of these elementary matrices one after the other so maybe you interchange the first and the second rows and then perhaps you multiply uh, and then maybe uh, you you scale one particular row by three and then you set row three to be uh, row three minus row two and so on right so you do a sequence of elementary row operations each of which corresponds to left multiplying by a particular matrix and the order and as you do the first row operation the second row operation the third row operation you left multiply by the first matrix the second matrix the third matrix and so on right uh, so effectively you end up with a new system of linear equations which corresponds to all of these multiplied with a times x equal to all of these multiplied by b so you get a2 x equal to b right and hopefully we want to do these row operations in a way such that uh, ultimately we we, ha we have the trivial system right so the trivial system is one which is a diagonal matrix so 0 and 0 everywhere else so this is what we call the, this system this uh, trivial system is what we call the row reduced echelon form Right. So, in terms of uh, so algorithmically, what we are doing is we are doing a sequence of row operations. But in terms of matrices and vectors, we are pre-multiplying or left multiplying uh, the system by these elementary matrices. And and it's easy to see. Uh, I mean, think about it for a while and you will see that it is always possible to bring any system of linear equations to this row reduced echelon form. Right. So that, that gives a recipe to solve a system of linear equations uh, and, and it is clear that uh, irrespective of 
the the dimensions of the matrix or irrespective of m and n you will always be able to solve it and uh, what do the solutions correspond to so, so suppose that uh, okay so 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 we so once we have brought this to row reduced echelon form then effectively we have a system of linear equations which looks like, like this so x1 equal to b1 x2 equal to b2 and and so on where, where this these b's are different from these b's maybe xk equal to bk where k is the number of uh, non-zero rows and then x 0 times x k plus 1 equal to b k plus 1 and so on. So the system is consistent if if all the b k plus 1 b k plus 2 and so on are all zeros. If not it is inconsistent because there, there cannot exist an assignment of x 1 x 2 up to x n which solves this system. And in general, if k is, if some of the b k is, uh, if, if some of, uh, if k is strictly less than n, then, uh, and the system is consistent, then you have infinitely many solutions, because, uh, be, because irrespective of what x k plus 1 is, what irrespective of what x k plus 2 is, you will always be able to get a solution, right. So, so this basically gives a recipe to solve any given system of linear equations. And I also leave it to you as an exercise to determine how many uh, operations. So, so note that each operation has a certain complexity and the number of, uh, you, you can try to compute the number of row operations which is required to reduce any system of linear equations to the row reduced echelon form. So that gives you the complexity of solving any system of linear equations. So we have seen that uh, each elementary row operation corresponds to left multiplying by a corresponding elementary matrix, right. So and in particular since we are multi so suppose that we have the matrix of the form a b so it's a matrix where i partition it into blocks a and b if i multiply if i pre multiply if i left multiply this by a matrix e then this is equal to e a e b right okay so now we'll make use of this uh, observation uh, to, to to efficiently uh, or yeah so to efficiently compute the inverse of a matrix uh, in your uh, in your undergraduate or uh, in high school you would have seen some formulas to compute uh, inverses of matrices that's a well you can try to hard code it but it's a very laborious computation uh, but row reduction in fact gives a very efficient method to compute the inverse of any uh, non-singular matrix. So how do we compute the inverse of a matrix A? Let us suppose that A is a matrix uh, which has an inverse. Okay, So it is a square matrix, non-singular. Let us consider the, uh, I'll, using this I will construct a new matrix A i. So assuming that A is n by n, so this is A n by n. I look at the, I augment it with the identity matrix of size n by n. Okay. Now, if I do row reduction such that I get the matrix I B. So, I do a number of, a sequence of row operations such that I reduce this to the form I augmented with some matrix B. Right. Now what is the matrix uh, uh, interpretation of row reduction? So this corresponds to 
or this is equal to some elementary some sequence of elementary matrices uh, so i'll so assuming that uh, all the so combining all the elementary row operations together uh, i'm left multiplying a i to get this matrix i b right so so after performing row operations i get a new matrix which is equal to i times which is equal to pi augmented with b but what is this equal to this is e a e i which is e a augmented with i with e right now if e a is equal to i and we know that a has an inverse then it must be the case that e is equal to a inverse and by this equality b is equal to e therefore b is equal to a inverse so a very easy way to obtain uh, the inverse of a matrix is the following so you take so given the matrix a which needs to be inverted you you construct the augmented matrix a times i you do row reduction to get i b i augmented with b and the resulting b will be equal to a inverse right and now uh, i i leave this to you as an exercise find the maximum number of row operations that you need to perform in order to uh, obtain in order to compute the inverse of a matrix so for a general n by n matrix a how many row operations and and therefore how many multiplications and additions do you require in order to get uh, in order to compute the inverse right so with this uh, i'll end this lecture